Okay, so question three, we're looking with m to work with minimum spanning trees. Now you can think about a minimum spanning tree as kind of like a charm bracelet. I'm trying to get at least one connection tied on to every single node that I have in the network. And unless they tell you that you have a mandatory path you've got to use, for instance, if they said I have to use the path between G and C, I would start there. But if they don't tell you where you have to, what you have to use, you always start with the shortest possible path. So looking around, I see my shortest path here is actually 20 from F to J. So I'm going to start there from 20 to F to J. Now, as a habit, I'm going to pick up my pencil because I'm not worried about tracing one single path through this whole network. I'm just going to connect things on one at a time. So I'll pick up my pen or my pencil and, you know, doodle somewhere else to remind myself of that. And I'm going to come back and look. From what I've already connected, from F or J, what is now part of my minimum spanning tree as I build it, what's the next shortest path that I can go along? I could take 65 to T, 55 to T, 60 to B, or 50 to G. 50 is the shortest, so I'm going to go down along 50. Again, I'm going to pick up my pen and look again. I want to connect new nodes that I've not touched with the highlighter yet, so I need to get B, T, D, and C connected in here in the shortest possible way. So I'm going to look for what I already have connected, and between 65, 55, or 60, or 65, what are my, what's my shortest option here? And we see that that's here, the 55. Again, I'll pick up my pen and think about from these four that I have connected at the moment, how can I get to B, D, and C in the shortest way possible? So I look for the next shortest path available to me. I've got a 50, a 35, a 55, and a 65, and an 85. So here, the 35 is obviously the shortest option. So we'll pick that one down to B. And again, I'm just trying to get every single node connected in, so I know I've got to get D and C on this network somehow in the shortest way possible. I can do it 65, I can do it in 55, or I can do it in 50. And 50 is the shortest, so I'll connect it on. And my last connection here is to C. I could either do it at a distance of 30 meters from D, or 55 meters from B, and my shortest one here is going to be from D at 30 meters. So my minimum spanning tree is complete. How I know this is that I can look and see that every single node in the network has yellow connected to it. It's part of my minimum spanning tree. I also notice very crucially that there's no closed loops. For instance, if that line was part of my network, I've got a closed circle or a closed loop. So looking at my complete tree, I've got no closed loops. I haven't gone any circles or connected any nodes on more than I need to. So this is the minimum possible that's needed. And the next thing to do would then be to add up the total distance. You don't have to tell me what order you did it in, in terms of, you know, like how if you make an Euler path, you tell me you start at F and go to J, blah, blah, blah. But here I just need to make sure you get me at least the total distance. So 20 and 50. plus 55, plus 35, plus 50, plus 30. Adding them up. 50 and 50, 100. We've got 20 and 30 for another 150. 55 takes me to 205, plus 35. That's going to get me to 240. So 240 meters is my total distance here. Now for the full excellence or higher level merit, you're going to have to tell me exactly in words how you got this diagram, which is basically writing down what I just said to you. I'm going to start with the shortest possible link. From there, I'm going to look what's the next node I connect, can connect to in the shortest possible distance. So from 20, my next shortest was 50 to G. And then from there, looking at the three nodes that I have connected so far, what's the next new node I could go to in the shortest distance, and that was T. Now from T, F, G, and J here, the next shortest I could do was to B at 35, then to D at 50, and to C at 30. So each time I'm connecting to a new unconnected node to connect it onto my minimum spanning tree, ensuring that every single time I've not made any closed loops, and I'm always picking the shortest path possible. So 
just have to write it down clearly. It's basically your thoughts, how you're thinking your way through the problem, and get it onto paper.